have worked together uh, two years ago with um, this big push for Africa. We issued 650 billion SDRs and we took the commitment to reallocate 100. One of the, the points we have to clarify during these two days is where we are. And I would be very curious to see from you where exactly we are in terms of commitments and real commitments, not subject to authorization of blah, 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 blah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, uh, and how many uh, vehicles and contracts did we negotiate and with which countries and how much can we envisage? Second, IDA is obviously a critical vehicle. We, invest, we reinvested a lot. How do you see uh, this one and how can we do much more? Third, how can we have a better uh, coordination between IMF and World Bank and maximize synergies and demultiply synergies? And my last remark would be about um, private sector. I mean, the two leverage we can have. We have a first leverage with regional banks. How, where, where, we, where do we stand? How to maximize it? because it's, we can multiply by four to five. And the second leverage is with private sector. In 2021, we launched this alliance for entrep private entrepreneurship. We, we had several very important meetings in Africa, but where do we stand? How can we do much more? Mark will be here at the end of this, uh, this session to as well mobilize the private sector with you, but this is a critical point. So I will do the math. Honestly speaking, we, we have the structures, we have to reform the structures, we have to much more expose our balance sheet, we have much more expose our public finance, but we have to maximize the leverage because at the end of the day, Nick uh, and Emma make very good speeches and we, 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 we have to reach a target. Our institutions have a huge responsibility to, to do what is necessary for the world of today and tomorrow. And that is translating, in my view, for the front and for the bank into one, a, a, a priority to change our mindset and understand that our mandates at their core are the same, but how we implement these mandates changes dramatically. For the fund, we have a clear mission. It is macroeconomic, financial stability, growth, and employment. But to implement this mission in the world I described with the disbalances we face requires to think much more comprehensively about the resilience of people that are educated, healthy, with good social protection at their feet, the resilience of society, not just of the banking sector, a top priority for both the bank and the fund is to mobilize more concessional and grant financing because of the disbalances we described. Our uh, track record on that, we have the um, uh, Poverty Reduction and Growth Trust. We almost got the resources we need. Demand is higher, interest rates are higher, so bringing concessionality is more expensive. Uh, we are short on subsidies, $1.2 billion. And my appeal at this meeting is close the gap. We are going, uh, Ajay and I are going to Morocco for our annual meetings. First time in half a century the meetings are on the African continent. We go there, we deliver for Africa. And deliver for Africa means for Ajay to have strong guide for the IMF to, to have strong PRGT. So, Sainvi, President Kuto William, what is your view about your situation and uh, your expectations beyond the uh, this global institution and how to, to fix the situation in your country and, and, and the continent? Thank you very much, Macron, and thank you for daring to call us to this meeting. I'm told it was How Dare You conference, but in any case, we are here. Let me just speak to this in two ways. Number one, um, I have had my sister Kristalina and um, Bangla, and we have excellent relations with the World Bank and IMF from Kenya. And these people have been incredibly of assistance, and we sincerely appreciate. 
But I am also aware that both Kristalina and uh, Bangra have a job to do, and they have people they report to called shareholders, and they don't have the final word. The final word rests with somebody else. And that is why we are almost all of us speaking the same language, because we seem to be on the same corner. There are people who are not sitting here, yet they call the shots. Now, we have a situation, and I, let me speak from the perspective of Kenya, our continent in Africa, and the global south. We need emergency liquidity. We need debt relief with urgency, with skill. That's our situation. How are we going to get that in the current situation? Um, listening to Guterres this morning, we get development resources eight times more expensively than others. We, get, we have inadequate resources and it takes forever to access it. So, how do we you know, find, how do we make meaning of this summit that my brother Emmanuel has put together? Our position is that if you want to get debt relief, emergency liquidity, and new money together, let us live here having agreed on one thing, that like uh, Guterres has said, let's look for half of uh, 500 billion new money. But if we are going to distribute it the way we did SDR, we will end up with nothing. SDR, we ended up with $33 billion in our continent of 1.2 billion people. Europe, with 450 million people, ended up with five times what we got. You heard it this morning, not from me, from the UN uh, Secretary General, that we got 13 times less as Africans as compared to Europeans because the whole architecture, and by the way, it was fair by the architecture, the current architecture of the financial system. But it is grossly unfair when we are looking at fairness. What are we saying? Our position, good people, is we do the following. Let us agree that the money we are supposed to pay for the next 10 years as repayment of debt, let us convert it into a new loan that is 50-year loan with 20-year grace period so that you don't have a problem with your triple A rating. You can continue to have the triple A rating, but you don't have a problem with your shareholders because you haven't given away any money. You've just changed the structure. And we get both liquidity, we get it urgently, and we can develop our countries. For Kenya, for example, we pay $10 billion every year to service our debts. If I had $10 billion every year for development in Kenya, instead of paying debt, it would make a huge difference. Let us be deliberate about climate financing. Those are the two things I'm going to ask. Let's be deliberate about climate financing. Since we agreed in 2015 on emissions, that we reduce emissions by 45% by 2030 and net zero by 2050. Are we moving anywhere in that direction? No. What has happened? Since Paris 2015, developed countries, they have tried because they have resources. 
Europe has come down 20%. OECD countries have come down 12%. But what has happened with the rest of the world? Emissions have gone up. Net, we've gone up the whole globe. We've gone up 17%. And last year, we spent $950 billion on fossil fuels. We only spent $500 billion on renewable energy. It means the journey towards net zero is not going forward, it's going in reverse. So what do we do? Because we have to agree on what to do. Our position is that there is a contest between national interest and global good. And in a contest between national interest and global good, national interest wins. Because we are politicians. Macron is a politician. And in politics, your constituency comes first. That is why we have not been able to get the 100 billion promised in Glasgow. Because every politician goes home and says, oh, you know, there's a global problem called climate change. We need to get money from you guys to go and sort out that problem. So the people of their country ask them, how is it our problem? A global issue? Why do we have to raise money to go and sort out the global issue? We run into trouble. So we need a new financing mechanism. We need a new financial, global financial institution. It is not possible, I dare say, to sort out a global problem using national institutions or institutions that are subject to uh, national interest or institutions that are subject to shareholder interest. Let me conclude. How do we do it? This is our proposal. There are already four proposals on the table. My good sister here from the IMF and others have said we should explore the possibility of carbon price flow, right? They said let's, let's make a proposal. 25 US dollars for the least developed, 50 dollars per, 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 uh, per ton uh, on carbon and 75. Assuming that we even agree, and by the way, we are ready from the global south, we are ready from the continent of Africa to pay our part. We do not want to be uh, given free lunch. We want to pay. Everybody should pay. Emitters should pay. Consumers should pay. The global south should pay. The global north should pay. Everybody should pay.